The facts that relate to my having been elected are to me an expression by the people that instead of looking backwards, we are looking forward. And in electing me and other Republicans, the people were expressing a desire for change. If you look at Arkansas before Rockefeller and after Rockefeller, you can see a very profoundly changed state, not just in its political system, but in many other ways as well. Rockefeller instituted in Arkansas that probably have had the greatest long-term impact would be his exercise of philanthropy. He demonstrated to the people in Arkansas that philanthropy is important. He seemed to provide an atmosphere that at least gave some hope to the possibility that Arkansas could change somehow. He was a person that was driven by a deep obligation to make the most of the opportunities that he had and the advantages that he had and, and had this uh, drive to share uh, his wealth and his opportunities with other people. He was a, a breath of fresh air that completely changed the attitude of the people of Arkansas. I was elected by Republicans, Democrats, and Independents by people of all races and all creeds, from all walks of life. As the 37th elected governor, I intend to represent all. And so I dedicate my administration to the people of Arkansas. I think that he challenged us as Arkansans to really come to look at each other and that we have to be concerned about the children of others and so that we are our brother's keeper. And I think Arkansans are, are very pleased that a man with Rockefeller's background and privilege, one of the wealthiest people in the country, would come to Arkansas and stay here and become an Arkansan. I think we were all proud of that and proud of him. Well, to understand Arkansas during the Rockefeller era, you have to go back to the time before Rockefeller. Arkansas came out of World War II poised to be a different state from what it had been before. But still, we faced tremendous poverty. We faced a very poor educational system. Even our uh, death rates were higher than the national average. Our medical system was not good. So there was a tremendous amount of catching up to do when Winthrop Rockefeller arrived on the scene. He's really a very fascinating and interesting guy, very sensitive in many areas, but very strong, highly competitive. You know, he was a maverick. He left Yale and he didn't do all the things the brothers did. Uh, he went in the service for six years and is in the Fort Benning Infantry Hall of Fame. And, you know, he was, uh, worked in the oil fields and he came here. He wanted to make a, a name for himself as a Rockefeller on his own terms. And uh, that's, that's just exactly what he did. After he was discharged from the Army, he was the only one of the brothers who was not yet married. He knew all the clubs and developed a reputation as a playboy, which the rest of the family didn't approve of. And I'm sure that disapproval plays a part in his willingness to leave New York and set up life somewhere else. I also think he wanted to create something on his own, to build something himself. I think his war buddies, you know, Frank Newell and others, uh, talked him to come down here and take a look at Arkansas. And when he came, he, he saw and he was impressed and then he, he saw that he could make a difference and so he stayed. I think he had the opportunity or thought at one time that the place he'd go back to after the war was the South Pacific and uh, spread his wealth there because the need was so great. But uh, I think friends that he met in the service from Little Rock invited him to come here 
And he did come here, and I think he realized that he could sow his dollars here and reap uh, just as good a harvest as he could have if, if he'd gone overseas to do it. And so I think he, he felt that this was a, in kind of a missionary way, that he was here to, uh, to do the mission of his family in sharing their wealth in, in a very noble and, and worthy way. I tell you what, there wasn't much up here when he came up way back then. He bought a lot of land up here. We was glad once we found out what was going on, you know, uh, because it was a job, and there were jobs that was hard to come by. And uh, uh, there was a lot of people worked up here when he first started, work up on these here buildings, and it was a lot of construction and a lot of money coming in to the community. And he loved the idea of uh, constructing and developing a uh, Santa Gertrudis cattle ranch. Cattle sales were something that were, were looked forward to by many people in the state because it wasn't just a cattle sale, it was a big social event, and he made it so. It was a real major social event in Arkansas, and he would invite innumerable people to attend whether they had any interest in cattle or not. Most of the people, as a matter of fact, attended the cattle sales had no interest in cattle, other than that, you know, like, look at them, I guess. Rockefeller realized that Arkansans had been basically a poor, deprived state for a long time. We'd gotten used to being at the bottom of every index. We came to believe, I think, all too often that well, if it was good enough for my parents, it's good enough for me. And what Rockefeller did was he came to the state and he didn't have any sort of inferiority complex about the state. He adopted the state lock, stock, and barrel. And he served as a source of inspiration for many of the people of my generation who were young and interested in seeing Arkansas become another kind of state and he really did have the ability to get Arkansans to think differently and to have different expectations for themselves and for their families. But as uh, time went by, he, uh, it quickly became apparent that he was gonna become involved in the life of the state. He wanted to do something here. He wasn't just retiring here. He saw a need, and I think the first need he saw was, we need some industrial development. And so he started trying to bring industry to Arkansas and jobs to Arkansas. And he was soon appointed to the chairmanship of the Arkansas Industrial Development Commission. He served there from 1955 until he ran for governor in 1964 and has made uh, some really remarkable achievements. And Falbus knew when he was appointing him that he was appointing a Republican. He appointed him because he figured the Rockefeller name would bring in the, the industry and he was right. Well, the Rockefeller was no fan of Orville Falbus, of course, but I think the fact that he accepted that appointment meant that he really wanted to do something for this state, a poor southern state, and he wanted to make a mark here. And Rockefeller came into the IDC and is credited with bringing 600 new plants to Arkansas, which employed 90,000 people. And as chairman, of course, he used his own money to, in airplanes to go see people and bring people in and wind them and dine them up on Pettigene or in Little Rock. And of course, the fact that there was a Rockefeller asking them to come look at Arkansas made a lot of difference to them. And they came and they looked and many of them did stay and set up those industries. Rockefeller brought out the whole spectrum of human emotion when it came to Arkansas politics. There were many of us who thought that he was just a wonderful addition to the state who would be of paramount importance in organizing Arkansans and calling on our best instincts and, and uniting people in a crusade to rebuild our state. But many of the people who were voting in the governor's race in 1964, 66, 68 came to those elections with an inherent uh, pride in the Democratic Party that was far more than just theoretical. A lot of people disliked the Rockefellers. There's no doubt about that. Uh, of course, you know, he was a Republican and uh, we was all diehard Democrats and we wasn't going to vote for no Republican. A lot of this harkens back to Reconstruction when many people believe that 
uh, folks from the north came in and caused many of our problems. So we have a long anti-outsider uh, heritage here in Arkansas, and that combined with his Republican Party affiliation uh, made for difficult campaigns for him. I think a lot of Democrats, and always going to stay Democrats, nevertheless saw in Rockefeller a chance for the state to reform itself and clean itself up, and they saw him with the prestige and the money and the, and the will to make some positive changes for the state. And a lot of those, what I will call good-thinking Democrats, that's what they really had in mind. They wanted a, a state that was, that was uh, somewhat emancipated from the old guard, one-party system.